Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, and 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler. Today, looking forward to bring, hanging out with y'all, basically, and playing a solo game of DR Congo, designed by Gary Dickin and the Kendall brothers, Steve and Phil, published by the designers, also known as Ragnar Brothers. So welcome everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the fact. Before we get started, big shout out to our... Patrons there, 734 of them, and a special shout out to Shaz, say thanks for being a patron, supporting the show, because let's face it, without y'all, this ain't happening. So DR Congo, I'm excited to bring this to y'all as a uh, solo game. It's, it's uh, quirky, which is kind of a hallmark of the Ragnar Brothers, and there's a lot going on, although I gotta be honest, it's, it's relatively streamlined. And there's a fair number of die rolls in this game, which can be the case in solo games, not always. Uh, it's a busy board, but and there's a lot of information. So honestly, I think the best way to go about doing this today is we're going to do something that I normally don't do. But I notice when it comes to solo games, this is kind of the best way to do it for me. And that is teach as we go. So that said, if y'all are ready... Uh, Let's go ahead and get into this, shall we? All right. All right. So that's what we're looking at with DR Congo. Forgive the poker chips up at the top of the board. It's to hold the, uh, the board down up there. Uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo is the 19th most populous nation in the world with enough natural resources to rival the productive capacity of most first world countries. From the Belgian administration of King Leopold II through the torrid times of independence and the horrors of two Congo wars, the country has seen its vast economic potential wax and wane and its citizens become some of the poorest in the world. We play the part of an industrial baron determined to see this nation rise up and take its rightful place in the world economy. You must realize the industrial potential of DR Congo and develop cities to help combat the insurgent menace. You will bring hope out of horror. And the game's described here as it's made up of four layers. And the way the rule book is laid out is there is there is the base game. And then from the base game, there is on top of that, the insurgent game. And on top of that, there is the government game. And on top of that, there is the Ragnar game. So it's just different layer upon layer upon layer that goes through. The solo game incorporates all of those. And honestly, I think that's where the game has to be. That, that's how we have to do this. So let's go over an overview of what it is that you guys are looking at here, both on the board as well as off the board. There is a ton of stuff out here. And I will do it as systematically as possible. And then, honestly, I'll go through the flow of a game without going through the actual individual details. And then we'll finish setup, which is going to consist of me getting one of this, these industrial bearing cards and then finishing setup. And then we'll go ahead and dive into it and, and kind of teach as we go. So if you guys have any questions, I would say hold off uh, until we reach that section. And if I'm not covering it clearly enough for y'all, let me know and we'll go from there. All right, so what are we looking at here? So this is a map of different provinces here in the Congo. So we have Kinshasa, which is the capital. Uh, I'm, yeah, the capital, which is this little area right here. And you'll notice that it has a level three city. It starts out uh, a government level three city, a government ship or boat and a government train, CCMF, right? Then we have the other provinces, and I might as well go through them. So we have Bas Congo over here. We have ben, Bendundu, which is this area down here. Then we have Equator, which is this larger area up here. And then Province Oriental up here. And I apologize for the pronunciations. I'm doing the best I can. Manima, which is this little area through here. 
We have Nord Kivu there, Sud Kivu here, Katanga, which is this larger province down in this area, Kasai Occidental, which is through here, and then Kasai Oriental. So the peanut gallery's job is to make sure that I don't confuse these two because Occidental versus Oriental uh, when it comes to the action cards. So those are the different provinces that are in the game. This is the local market or the resource market, but honestly, I wanna be able to see these local prices. So I'm actually going to set this off the board, but the rules suggest you keep them here, but off board I think is fine. As I mentioned, the government starts with a level three city, which is the highest city that a city can grow to, a ship and a train. What else do we have? Well, we have the different resource or industry areas that we're going to be able to uh, develop as the game goes along. There are four different types of industry in this game. There are crop industry, which are the green spaces here. And if you see an outline, and if you're not watching it 1080p60 and you can, I would recommend doing so because it's a busy board and there's a lot going on. This crop right here has kind of a double outline to it. That's going to be a double producing crop, a double producing hydro area or electric power. Um, then on top of that, there are minerals. So these mineral spaces, especially mining down here in the south. And then last but not least, there is oil industry where you see kind of oil derrick looking spaces out here in the ver various locations. There is the international market up here, which is where we're going to want to be selling to because the international market is going to pay us far more than the local market will. But the local market is kind of a fallback if we're not able to sell to the international market, which then kind of leads into, well, how do we sell in the international market? Well, there's a few different escape routes. Think if you're familiar with brass, this is going to be somewhat familiar. So to get to these off board locations here in Bas Congo, you'll notice there's this purple little line out here. This purple line is significant. Why? Because it allows us to sell for the higher value whenever we sell to the international market. Whereas over here, there are four other arrows that are not purple. There's one up here in Province Oriental here. There's one in Nord Kivu. There's one out of uh, Sud Kivu. And there's one out of Katanga there that are these kind of brown or think of them as just plain off board locations to be able to sell into the international market. But unfortunately, as you might have guessed it, you're going to sell to the lower value or you're going to sell at the lower value. Whereas Bas Congo, you want, you're going to sell to the higher value, which leads us to, okay, well, how do I get to these locations? Well, depending on which industrial baron we are, we're going to have one of these locations we're going to start in and we're going to be able to build uh, start out building some industrial uh, resource generating locations out here on the board. However, unlike brass, most of the uh, resources do not teleport to these off board locations. You must build infrastructure. So now let me go ahead and bring your guys' attention to this part here. So you have my components, which are here. Oops. And then we have the government's components, which are the purple which these are, they're kind of a dummy player that I'm going to be controlling, but they're going to be working in conjunction with me because these are going to help. And ultimately we're trying to get victory points or medals. And you'll notice this metal track around metal as in like pin metals on your chest, not metal as in like tungsten metal. So over here, we have the different industries. There are different types as I covered already. There are two level one, two level two and one level three city. And then there are two trucks, two trains and two boats, which uh, there's our transport, how we're able to transport from various regions through various other regions to hopefully be able to get to these off board locations. Otherwise, we're selling for the very low values here in the local market. Well, where can I build? Well, you'll notice here we have ship uh, spaces out here, then there are going to be railroad locations here, and then the trucks. Well, the trucks can 
go to any border, which are these red lines here. So if I started out here in Equator and wanted to eventually make my way out to the Basque Congo, again, the government and all players, even if this wasn't a solo game, would share their transports. So transporting, building transportation helps everybody around uh, in the game. So if I were to say, trans uh, build a truck here that would get me into Bandundun, Bandundu, then I would then have to be able to get from here out to a different location, which, okay, here into this ship, and then a, maybe that gets me out here, or if I get into Kinshasa, then through the train out, and once you're in there, you can leave through Bass Congo, and the same thing works for that side of the board. However, you're going to notice the silhouettes of these dudes in white here. These are insurgents. Insurgents suck. So unsuppressed insurgents completely suck. What does that mean? They basically make it to where if you, if they are unsuppressed, unsuppressed is what they all are right now, meaning there are no uh, government troops or any of my troops known as peacekeepers. If there are no peacekeepers in a region, these are unsuppressed uh, insurgents, which basically means I can't do anything in that region. It's a slight exaggeration, but I do mean very slight. However, if there is, if there are peacekeepers, regardless of the number of peacekeepers in that region, they are now suppressed, which sucks considerably less, but they still are infringing on what I can and can't do, and I will cover that as the game goes along. So, the moral of the story here is there are two types of insurgents in this game. There are minor insurgents, which are the white insurgents here, and then there are the major insurgents. Major insurgents really suck. These have a combat value of four, whereas the majors have a combat value of six. And the th reason these guys make it so much worse, not only are they harder to get rid of, but they initiate combat no matter what if they are on the board, which we will get to when we talk about these action cards. All right, so that kind of briefly goes over insurgents. As I said, we have the market here. It's going to be a variable market as we sell and at the beginning of each round, these are going to adjust uh, up and down, hopefully up, which for our sake, if you're rooting for your hero, i.e. me, then hopefully we want these to go up. We have the turn order track, and turn order is going to be chosen by me each round. I, either I'm going to go first, or the government's going to go first, and there's going to be reasons for why we want that to be, uh, so, you know, the order in which those go. Then there is a game phase, and of course it's an elephant. I appreciated that little, uh, that little touch. And this goes through the different uh, phases of a round. Now, it's called a phase track, which I think is a terrible name. It's a round. So in a round, the beginning of the game, we're going to go through the overture here. Then the round actually is elect ministers. There are three ministers that are available to elect, i.e. bribe the uh, ministers. I will be able to bribe at most one of those per round. Then we're going to uh, roll the dice or die for to adjust the resources. Then there are four action phases, and then if I, one of if I have any resources out here on the board that have not already previously been sold, we will sell those. Then hopefully again to the international market, if not the local market, and then we'll go through a reset phase. Now. There are a ton of other things that I have not covered. Uh, the various actions in a round and the things that you can do on your turn. I think the best way to do that is to actually go through the game and actually go through. There are support cards which will come out. I will go through those. I will go through the action cards, the whole nine yards. But I think that's enough to kind of let us go ahead and get started. The solo game has a maximum of six rounds, so six, you're gonna see the round marker up here. We have my metal marker 
For me to succeed, to be successful in this game, I have to get to here. Oh wait, that's right. I have to not only get there, make it to 30, and then make it all the way back up to 20 for a total of 50 points. To completely win the game, not only do I have to reach 50 points, but then the city development marker must also meet the end game marker here, this uh, game end target. In a regular game, when those two meet, that's the end of the game. However, in the solo game, it's going to be a maximum of six rounds. The city development marker will increase, as you might guess, as I build and upgrade cities, both the government as well as my own. And at the end of each of the rounds, you'll notice there are either three or two arrows that show the little target moving back to the left, meaning this will move back two or three each round. So manipulating that also is going to come into play, in theory at least. So that said, I think that's good enough. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So I have uh, a couple of shout outs. I forget the names, I apologize. There's a solo round summary on BGG, which looks pretty good. Um, I didn't have it when I played a solo my first time, so we're going to go through and use that. There's also another little two-page little summary here as well. It shows the various things that uh, during a action phase in the Ragnar game, which is the full game. And there are easily missed rule stuff and then little resource chart, this and that. All right. As well as we'll be referencing the rule book when we need to. So that said, if y'all are ready, place your bets. Um, I would bet on the game winning and not me, but let's hope. All right. I'll go ahead and bring the chat and I'll bring the camera up. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them as we go along and we play. So to begin with, um, let me flip that over. Here we go. So we had to place one minor insurgent in every location except for Kinshasa, which we have done. So you'll know we have because we have no minor insurgents left. Oh, I didn't even mention the little diamonds here. See that? Does it sparkle? Yeah, huh? Those are worth victory points, so we want to get diamonds. Those will have to do with the diamond locations out here on the board. More on that later. All right, so now we have to choose an industrial baron. So we'll shuffle these up. This way you know it's random, and we will choose that one right there. So who are we? These cards now are out of the game. We don't need to see those anymore. Those can go over there. So the industrial baron, we are Christian Toko. And our starting province is Bendundu. Okay, so Bendundu right here. So we get, uh, in, oh, one other important thing I want to point out. The game comes with paper money. We're not messing with paper money. So what we're going to do is we're going to lop off the N2 zeros on any time there's money involved. So if it's $500, it's actually $5. So in this case, I start with 110 bucks. You'll see that I have 100 here. We actually need to reach over into the bank and pull another 10 bucks. Nice. All right. So there. So obviously we're starting in Bendundu. We start with 11,000 or 110 for our game there. Uh, then we may pay, place one or two peacekeepers here, um, but we have to pay to do so. All right. So I see no reason to not, other than they cost money, and it's our home province, so we're going to go ahead and place a couple there. So, however, placing those is not free. Placing peacekeepers costs 10 bucks a piece, so there goes 20 bucks. All right. All right. Cool. So we have now placed our peacekeepers out there at the cost of 10 bucks a piece or a thousand normally uh, there. And we build one industry to, in the starting province, but we have to pay for to do so. So what do we want to do? So we have three options, but honestly, we really only have two options. The reason I say that is we have crops, we have double crops, or we have hydro. Well, what are the costs for these? So if you look on the back of these, 
crops cost 500 whether it's single or double so obviously we're going to if we're going to do crops we're going to do the double so that would cost us five bucks hydro would cost us 10 bucks again we're lopping the last two zeros off just for the poker chips so here's my thought process on this is hydro unlike uh yeah, hydro normally is going, or not normally, let me rephrase this, <clears throat> excuse me. Hydro is actually sold to cities in the region in which they're produced and adjacent cities as well. That's going to come into play in a big deal because this is a level three city. And the fact that it's a level three city says we sell at the higher and lower price, meaning we don't sell at 200, we don't sell at 400, we don't sell at 800, we sell at 1200. So that would be 12 bucks a piece as opposed to two, four or eight bucks. That's awfully tempting. So that's the motivation to build hydro. Whereas building crops, well, we have double crops here. And when we sell, if we're selling out through here for Bass Congo, we would sell for six bucks a piece, which would be 12. But I like the idea of going ahead and starting out with the hydro out there. So I think we're going to wait on the crops here. So we will set, spend the 10 bucks there. And we have now built some hydro. And we placed our peacekeepers. So now we are set up and ready to go. All right. Cool. And thanks, Molly. She says, uh, love seeing the new solo runs. Love y'all teaching plays in general. I appreciate that, Molly. You guys are going to have to give me breaks for tea throughout the uh, stream because it's just me talking for however long it takes. Earl Grey again today. And yeah, Kabuki Kids, solo is a great way, uh, way to grasp the rules. Plus, it forces you to learn the entire game and not just the first level, uh, all four layers. So there you go. So we have done that. Combat is not automatically initiated because there is no major insurgent there. So, okay. So then that is the overture. Now we go down to elect ministers. All right. So how does this work? All right. So there. So we're going to decide turn order. I'm going to go ahead and go first in the first round, and we'll have the government go second in that. All right. So electing ministers, it's a little deceiving in this. Um, we're actually not going to do that until we get to the action phase here. So resource die roll and support cards. So here we go. So the resource die roll. What's going to happen is depending on what I roll, every one of those resources or the uh, industries out there are going to go up one, two, or three bumps, depending on what I roll. A one or a two gives us one bump, a three or four gives us two bumps, or a five or six gives us three bumps. We're looking for a high roll. By the way, I didn't see anybody uh, place their bets. I hope you guys are betting on me, but... Here we go. And the over under on Glory to Rome's, I'll set it uh, at two and a half for die roll. So here we go. <sighs> here we go. So everything bumps up one. That is not a good start. All right. So now we're going to deal out uh, three support cards. So we haven't even talked about these support cards. So we have Pakistan, which is engineering which I don't understand the, why they're named at all other than just to be fun. It's like outside investment, I guess, is uh, the premise of this. We have Singapore, which is Urban Investment 2, and we have Portugal Takeover 2. So on any given round, a round being through all four of these action phases, I may select any one of these cards to use, okay? However, um, obviously they're dependent on what comes out and whether or not I want to use it, how to use it, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Yeah, I, I hear you, Chad, if I'm going to roll like that. That was terrible. Like, what, what? Seriously? Really? Oh, boy. Let's get those out of the way. All right. So the support cards, like I said, there's some sort of bonus for me 
I can take one per round, and the game's going to be a maximum of six rounds, so there we go. So what are they? So Portugal says here, when building an industry, you can take over a flipped industry belonging to another player or the government, pay the normal costs to that player or the bank, whether it's uh, government or uh, other players, but in this case it would be government. Um, so it has to be flipped over. When does it get flipped over? Whenever you're building cities or when it's already produced. So, okay, that not terribly great for us right now. The Urban Investment 2 says when developing a three-point city, that's a level three city, so good luck on that anytime soon. So, and these will go away at the end of a round, so that's unlikely. So this normally would require three industry tiles uh, to be able to build a level three city, and they must go level one, level two, level three. So that or, or you, this one, you would only need one industry, but it would cost 80 bucks. Whereas a level three industry normally costs, uh, sorry, a level three city normally costs, I'm looking, uh, I don't have that memorized. I wanna say it was uh, 30 bucks normally, and I'll have to reference the rule book, but that is considerably more expensive but you only need one industry, so there's that, but still not really helpful for us right now. Whereas Pakistan's engineering here says when building an industry, pay half the normal cost. Ah, that one might be really useful, so okay. So we have uh, dealt and revealed the three support cards. Uh, right. Um, also, I should point out that the support cards must be used the minute you take them immediately, and then all three will get discarded because obviously it's a solo game and I can only take one. So there's that. All right, so next is choose and pay for a minister. All right, so here's how this works in the solo game. What we're going to do is we're going to roll a die, which I'm sure I'm going to roll high because that hurts me. We're going to add the phase cycle, the phase cycle meaning one, two, three three or four. So basically, uh, let's, let me do this. So that's a two. So it's going to cost me $2, um, times which phase cycle that it is. So right now it's only going to cost me two bucks to hire one of the three, uh, ministers. So what are the three ministers that are out here? Well, the defense minister says you can place and must remove government or may place and must remove government peacekeepers, which are these purple guys, which are going to help defeat these insurgents, which is going to be really beneficial as determined by the action cards and may initiate combat. That's going to be really, really good. Um, normally, what I'm going to be doing is probably between these two. The second one is the uh, interior minister. They receive government money, so when we flip over this action card, some amount of money is going to go onto that inter uh, interior minister card. That is also, taking him is going to allow me to build industry as well as taking normal government actions, which are just like player actions during these four uh, st action phases. Producing resources, selling resources, this and that. And the key is I get to embezzle money off of him, which puts money in my pocket, which allows me to do more stuff. All right, so there's the interior minister. The finance minister may uh, raise or lower resource markers as shown on these action cards, which boosting them would be beneficial for me, right? And little player aid there. So for two bucks, I see no reason not to, so we're definitely going to, and I get to choose one of which to be able to do, and because he doesn't have any money on him uh, to start, I think I will go ahead and hire the defense minister, and you know what, we'll go ahead and put this right here on top of my card, my card actually doesn't need to be out anymore, so we have hired the defense, or bribed, right? All right. Yeah, apparently I did use all the good rules and cruel necessity. This is terrible. But at least that, at least that was a good one for keeping the uh, uh, ministers cheap. So there we go. Now we're going to reveal the first action card. There we go. So the makeup of the action card is bad, 
and then potentially good, okay? Wow. I, you guys have my word that I did shuffle up all the action cards, and uh, here we go. So we start at the top. Bandundu gets a major insurgent. Whee! All right. So anytime a, a one of a uh, province or a location uh, tells you to put that out there, you replace it with whatever it says to replace it with. So there's going to be a major insurgent. Those have a value of six. All right. Uh, Manima would have a uh, four already has one, and Nord Kivu already has one in it. So, okay, easy enough. Now, what happens? Well, now the defense minister will place out... Um, you know what? Give me just one moment, if I can. Something I want to reference in the rule book. If the defense minister is not taken, no government peacekeepers are placed or removed, uh, and the, the, anything on the map remains in position, and they contribute to combat, but they can't initiate combat. But the important thing is placing them. Well, this allows me, and these range from one to three. Unfortunately, only one shown here, and oh, hey, I choose to place them here. All right, so then we're going to finish the rest of the thing. So the uh, interior minister is going to get $15 placed on theirs. And it does say in the rules that even if not selected, they're going to get the money on there. Now, however, the finance minister, if there is one uh, industry shown here, then nothing happens. However, if there are two shown here, I believe they both go down uh, a moment. This is the automatic rules. If there's one resource on the card, uh, it, the resource marker remains where it is. If there are two, then both resource markers are moved down one box. Awesome. That drops down, that drops down. And by awesome, I mean that's terrible. All right. Okay. Now, because there is a major insurgent, uh, I guess technically we're supposed to follow the top half. Oh, you know what? Actually, mm, a moment. Let me double check the order of this. I want to make sure that this goes right as far as the insurgents. When placing those. Uh, yes, this happens before major combat happens, so I did right. Okay, so we have one, two, three versus a six, so that six now becomes, I need to roll higher than what that number is. Uh, now I'm paranoid, let me double check. It must exceed, exactly, must exceed six or must exceed four. So I have th add three to my die roll and it has to be higher than a six. Awesome. Four plus three, boom. Insurgent is killed and removed, and now we're in good shape. Whereas, had I lost, bad things would have happened. Had I lost, uh, because that was a major insurgent is defeated, each player having one or two peacekeepers in that province is immediately reward awarded one medal for service to the nation. All right, we got a point. Yes. All right. Oh, we actually did play this with four players, and we weren't terribly keen on this due to the amount of randomness of these action cards and 
the way things played out. Uh, it, the game definitely picked on one or two players in particular, and it just, we think this is probably best as a solo game. So there you go. All right, Mark. Um, now, if Bendundu were a diamond province, we would also, uh, nor, uh, if it were a minor insurgent, uh, if it took place in a diamond province like Katanga or Kasai Oriental, among others, then defeat of a minor or four insurgent will result in money being awarded to the player having peacekeepers there. So I would have gotten five bucks in addition to that. All right. And uh, in addition, I would get a diamond if it were a major insurgent. So if Ben Dundu had a diamond, because that was a major insurgent that I just took out, I would have gotten a diamond. A diamond can be used as extra medals or victory points at the end of the game, uh, yes, or a desperate five bucks if need be, okay? All right, welcome Shaz. All right, so we had our first battle, that's good. We've done the second half of this, and now, following turn order, so, here we go, so my turn. I may place peacekeepers for 10 bucks a piece, I can then uh, initiate combat anywhere I wish, and then I take my action. All right. Now, there is no adjacency here. So just because Bandundu is my home province, I could do something in Nord Kivu, or I could do anything I want anywhere on the board other than transport resources for the simple fact that, well, you have to have infrastructure for that. But for placing peacekeepers out there and placing... Uh, uh, not resource, uh, industry, you do not have to do so. So you are allowed to have a maximum of two peacekeepers uh, per player in a province. So I'm going to go ahead, I think, and I'm going to place two of mine out here for a whopping 20 bucks, putting those in Bass Congo. So spending 25, get five back there can you yeah y'all can see that plenty all right so there we go the reason for that is suppressed versus unsuppressed so basically everything from here over is unsuppressed what does that mean well suppressed you can still do some stuff unsuppressed you basically no 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 there you go and industry may not develop uh in adjacent cities that is terrible okay and if there are any resources and they are unsuppressed those resources come off the board immediately so having unsuppressed uh folks out here is terrible okay uh, insurgents whereas having them um suppressed means you can use industry to be able to build cities and to upgrade cities getting a discount based on the amount of money shown on the back of that. You can't do that if there are suppressed insurgents in that region. Also, double industries only would produce one if it were a suppressed uh, insurgent. Then boats and rail can only transport one cube, one resource, whereas normally those are unlimited. Trucks, on the other hand, are always limited to one. And you can only export one cube uh, per set from where they are. So normally, like if I had three crops here, I could export one entire set, meaning all of that. Whereas here, I could only export one if he were over there, okay? And no hydro uh, export across borders if this insurgent were here. Well, good news. He's suppressed here, so I can't do those things I just said, but they're not in Bandundu, which is the important thing. All right, so do I want to initiate combat? So if I lose, each player who has a peacekeeper present must remove one of those peacekeepers. So had I lost this roll, this one and this one both would have gone out of Bandundu. But 
as it is. They stay in perpetuity, um, but they can always move, uh, getting, uh, paying the cost of 10 bucks to move one of my guys. The government obviously moves for free. So I'm risking, I would need to roll a three or higher here. I think I'm going to wait. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait and just keep him suppressed there. I'm okay with that. So I'm not going to initiate combat. Uh, combat. So now let's go ahead and go into what the, uh, what the action is. Hey, Nick, what's up? So what are my possible actions in this game? Flip this one over so I can get the list. All right. First thing is build industry. Well, building industry is placing industry markers out here on the board as I did earlier at the beginning of the game, paying the amount of money that it shows, obviously. Placing a transport, again, those are going to cost money as well. Uh, and placing transport to be able to then transport uh, things across borders to be able to export it, right? Develop a city. Developing a city is 20 bucks per point level. So a level one city is 20, 40, and $60 respectively, all right? Um, and cities obviously are going to get me medals and they're going to boost the, uh, the city growth uh, marker one, which also helps for in-game condition as well. I can also produce resources. Producing resources, if it's a single resource, then we would place one cube on that flip it over. If it's a double, we will place two cubes, so easy enough. Um, and then the other option is selling, and selling will automatically happen here, but depending on how the market is fluctuating or in a multiplayer game, uh, these will fill up and play. you'll have to sell for less money as the game goes along or as the round goes along, so you may be motivated to sell early. That's probably not going to happen too terribly often, I don't think at least on my turn, whereas the government still may uh, do theirs. So what am I going to do on my turn? <sighs> well, we can build a city, which I think is not a terrible idea, plus cities help uh, fight insurgents. And because I have multiple, uh, stat multiple actions, I have four in a given round, we obviously want to be as efficient as possible, but our options here, build that resource, uh, producing, and I should say that producing flips all your resources uh, on the board, which is nice, and they develop, uh, they produce everywhere they are on the board. So I think we're going to wait on producing. Developing a city makes sense, placing a transfer. Eh. So building an industry or building a city. I think that building a city is going to be more important and we could get a discount for flipping this over, which it would give us a discount of 10 bucks, meaning that first city would only cost us 10 bucks. But I really want to be able to, uh, but if we s produce and then sell without having a city there, it would immediately, it would sell to that city, which that city would get us 12 bucks. Oh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? But building the city helps fight off any insurgents that may come. But a level one city only lets us sell at the lower price. So that costs us considerable amounts of money. You know what? On, in hindsight, I think we're going to go ahead and place the industry there. So we're going to build a double crop and that is going to cost us five bucks. I'm going to put these at an angle like this to show that they are double crops. Okay. Whereas the singles are going to be like so, and the doubles will be at an angle. So that costs us five bucks to be able to take that action. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that, is that clear for everybody? Um, Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So that is my action for there. So now we would go to the government. Well, the government, I'm not, I don't have the interior minister. 
So the government's not going to take any actions. That money's just going to sit there. They're not going to build any infrastructure. They're not going to do any of those things. All right. So there's that. So now we go back to pay for ministers. So that will come back. That's the end of the first quarter of the first round. Does that make sense so far, hopefully, for y'all? Obviously, I'm not, uh, I haven't gotten to everything in the game, but you get the idea. So the other thing to remind ourselves on are these cards over here. You guys help me, don't forget, like if I build another industry uh, on one of these other rounds, I can pay half the cost, but $5, really not that, uh, not as big a cost. I should also point out, and this is horribly hard to see right here, all right? But this shows the cost. So the cities, two, four, and, or 20, 40, and 60 bucks. Uh, building um, transports, it's uh, 10 bucks for a truck, 20 bucks for any other, so for rail and ship. And the, the uh, resource, the resources are 10, 20, 30, and 40 bucks respectively. So if we're going to build some of the higher value ones, it might behoove us to then use that card there, okay? And that also shows the available actions, but they couldn't have written that smaller if they tried. But it's there and it's helpful, so easy enough. All right, so we go into elect ministers, right? So actually that technically is there. <coughs> Excuse me, get some water. So we're going to roll the die and let me make sure for the solo game, make sure we're doing this. Yep. Each action phase. So we're going to roll the die and see how expensive the ministers are to bribe. Okay. So that's five bucks. It's the second one. It now costs 10 bucks to bribe one of these. Ooh. The good news is the peacekeeper stays there, no matter if I don't take the government, uh, the defense minister. <sighs> so they'll fight on my behalf if I flip this over and they're there. Whereas if I take the defense minister now, I could place one here, maybe more in Bas Congo or another in Bandundu or something else out here to initiate combat if I so desire. Or the interior minister. Um, that allows me to build industry, which also helps be able to get me more money. Or the finance minister, which raising prices here. I don't think the only one that really appeals to me right now is the defense minister, but 10 bucks. I think that's too expensive. I, I, I don't think I hire any of them or bribe any of them. Yep. Final answer. Not gonna. So then we flip this over. This moves over to the second one. So Kasai Occidental. So Kasai Occidental. So this one goes away. The major comes out. Then those already have minors, so we don't need to do that. We do not place two out there. Does get 10 bucks. There. Oops. Move this out of the way. There we go. Uh, and then nothing will happen here with the finance minister for those. So we do, we would normally have a battle here, but there are no peacekeepers there, so it's just really locked down for right now. So, okay, not the end of the world. Didn't affect us here. Didn't affect us here. And now I determine turn order. Really doesn't matter. So I will go first here. But now that there's 25 bucks here, now we might be able to, uh, now we might be motivated to uh, do something next round there. So what do we want to do? We built that industry. Now we could produce, producing would give us one hydro there and two crops there, which as it is right now, 
because this ship is on the border between Bandundu and Kinshasa, uh, and then there's a train going from Kinshasa to Bass Congo to then leave here, unfortunately only one of those crops could leave here because it's a suppressed insurgent. So I can't produce and sell on the same turn. So if I were to produce right now, hmm. oh, there's so much I want to do. So I want to produce, I want to get the interior or the finance minister to boost this up next round. 12 bucks is 12 bucks because it's going to cost me 20 to build a city there afterwards. What do we do? Do I not worry about that right now? Do I just say to heck with it and I build the city regardless? It would cost me eight bucks. I would lose $8 for when I sell here, but it saves me an action, right? And I'm only going to get a maximum of 24 actions in a in the game eight bucks if I'd rolled better if that were higher I think I'd be more motivated you know what I'm gonna go ahead and build the city and if I'm gonna build the city why not save the ten bucks instead of getting the eight bucks that I would get there so to build the city you must spend whatever level the city is. So each province can have one city in it, and you'll notice that regardless or wherever it is, it's actually a named location that has a little dot on it. So here in Bandundu, I'm building the city of Bandundu. So this is a level one, so that requires one industry. One industry must be with the first industry must be in that province to be able to build it so in this case i will go ahead and choose this one and that gives a discount for that cost or for building or upgrading that city so in that case that's a ten dollar discount means i only spend 10 bucks so i get 15 back and building that city uh so there's that And I receive one medal for doing so there. And the city advances, marker advances one because, well, that's a level or it just building or upgrading a city bumps it up one. Same with the medals. All right. So there we go. So there's that action. And we are done with this. So now we go back to rinse and repeat back to pay for ministers. So let's roll. Let's see what happens. There we go. That's a lot better. Minister now will cost us three bucks. <sighs> okay. So we're not so worried about him right now, I don't think. So defense minister placing people, uh, uh, peacekeepers out there is definitely going to help us for out here later. But then again... If we want to be able to build infrastructure at half cost using that here, we may want that defense minister. So maybe, maybe we hope we roll again low for the fourth one to be able to then take the interior minister to develop some stuff. You know what? That sounds pretty good. I'll go ahead and spend the three bucks and take the defense minister again. That's kind of a, a good way to put it, Chaz. It's not necessarily as a, uh, a war game. I mean, it has combat, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a war game. So defense minister there. There we go. So we get a major out here in Equator. And then one in Congo, which already has one, and one in Kasai Occidental. Oh, hey, he goes from a major down to a minor. That's good. And then, because I'm the defense minister, I can place two. And we're definitely going to place one here, because now three versus four, 
I need to roll a two or higher. That's good. Then, if I were to place up here an equator, I would have to roll a six because combat is forced to be initiated, but I don't want to necessarily do that. And where do we want to place the, I could place it in either of those two locations, but they're pretty well, they're pretty well secured, especially with the one defense now with the city there. So do I slowly start expanding or do I go ahead and throw something out over on one of the uh, periphery locations? And you know what? I think a double oil is pretty nice. So why don't we go ahead and put that up in Nord Kivu there. Now I can initiate combat there needing a roll of four or higher, but I think I'm going to wait on that and just let it build up a little bit there. All right. No, no problem really, Chad. It, it's haven't noticed an issue with the poker chips in that regard. Um, no money goes to the interior minister. Triple zeros, wah wah. And oil and hydro drop down again. So maybe that was a good idea in hindsight. I mean, pure luck of the draw, but cause since that keeps dropping. So that's good, that works out. Um, because I didn't take the interior minister, I'm gonna keep the order the same, that didn't matter there. So what do we wanna do now? I could produce here. Um, we could also build it. Oh, you know what? Back up. I did want to initiate combat here to get rid of that guy. Hopefully we need to roll a two or higher. Whew. That'll work. All right. So now that he's gone, now do we want to, we have to build infrastructure first before we can build the city there. Cause you have to, uh, turn over a, uh, a industry to be able to, it costs, it uses up one industry in that region. So now the question is, do we want a single oil or do we, which we can off board here for there for the 16 bucks, or do we want the double hydro and notice the double hydro will produce in for a city that is there as well as the adjacent city, which is here, but the price is dropping so low now. Uh, and it will reset into these red boxes at the end of the round if it's at that red box or below. And I do have that here. And the oil is prohibitively expensive. So you know what? Why don't we go ahead and hook up the oil? So we're going to go ahead and build some uh, industry. And that costs for the oil is 40 bucks normally, whereas now it's we're going to take this card and use it and go ahead and pay 20 bucks. So all of those cards will then go down here, 20 bucks. And all of a sudden our 110 is now down to 20 bucks. But we're in good shape now because when we produce, we'll be able to sell. And because at least right now, there's no insurgents out here, it'll go off board to be able to then pay the high, get the higher amount. All right. Take care, Chip. Thanks for hanging. Uh, all right, so that is the end of the third round. We go into the fourth round, and before we flip that, let's find out how much a minister will cost. And we got two, so that's going to be eight bucks. And one thing I want to go over was the embezzling for when you get the uh, the uh, the interior minister here. So the interior minister. is a moment when the government develops a city then the interior minister player is awarded a medal so when the city when the game develops cities i also get points for that that's good and the interior minister can produce resources on any number of government industries just like the player however when there again when the uh let me back up 
The interior minister acts as if it were another player whenever I have that. However, the interior, uh, in addition to building industries on industry space, the interior minister may also build one extra industry and a single production in any province where all industry spaces have already been built. So, for instance, if those have been built, they can build one additional there. All right. Uh, that one industry must be of the same type as one of the industries in that province. And after paying for any industry, the player may take money from the remaining money left here. And then I get it. So it's a good way to loot the government of money to be able to line my own pockets so that I can do stuff. All right. And whenever the government places transports out here, I can then take 50% of that cost that's left over. Uh, I'm sorry, I can take 50% of the amount paid and put it into my pocket. And whenever I develop a city as the interior minister, I can take money from the uh, remaining money up to 50% of the amount paid. So the interior minister is going to get me some money in my pocket, which money is getting awfully tight. And because we have cities and uh, government peacekeepers there, I feel pretty safe, I think, because even if a major comes out here, that would be a four. So I would need a roll of three or higher. So over 50%. Um, I feel pretty good with that. So since the cost is going to be a total of eight bucks, that's awfully expensive. Or do we take none? It's probably going to add some amount of money onto it. And do I wait until it's cheaper and get it here? What am I trying to do this round? Well, let's see. If I produce, I would get produce two crops and I would produce one oil. And all of that, as of right now, can then be sold for, to, uh, in the resource sales for the higher value because that's traveling over the purple line and I do have max transport meaning ship which is unlimited and trains which are unlimited so I'm gonna get a fair amount of money doing that but I have to produce uh, yep we're gonna wait I'm not going to take, uh, I'm not going to hire or bribe any government officials. So there we go. So in Nord Kivu, that is not good for us. So that comes out. Could have been able to place two peacekeepers. And then Kasai Oriental and uh, Sud Kivu, there already is one. So not doing that. Only five bucks goes there. And really that drops and that drops although that's not going to hurt me since it wasn't either of those so actually maybe not the end of the world there all right so we must initiate combat here we have to roll a six or the peacekeeper is removed okay oops oop Let's try that again ah oh well five is not or a four is not a six so the peacekeeper gets removed Womp womp. It's now suppressed again. Or uh, unsuppressed, sorry. Okay, and no other combat's going to be initiated, so what are we going to do on our turn? I think we stay on target and we do exactly as I said. <sighs> yeah. So we're going to double produce crops. That's going to get us two there. We're going to produce one oil there there we go done then we go into uh their resource sales all right so let me go through the steps here it's sold in sets a truck carries one boats and trains can carry any uh number and the matadi or the Congo line here uh sells for the market higher price all the others would sell for the lower price only two resources per box are put out there which i'll explain that in a minute 
Um, okay, so here we go. So because there are no insurgents, these can then travel via the boat that shares that border. Then they will travel via train there and make it out here. So we're going to put both of these. Those sell for six bucks a piece. So that's going to be 12 for that. And then this, because there's no insurgents, will come out. And that will be 16 bucks. So 16 and 12 is $28. A much, much needed influx of cash. Move those up a little. There we go. Uh, the government would sell if they had anything out there, but alas, they do not. If there were more than two crops, the next sale for crops would then be at that value and then consider and then lower. So only two per box like that. Okay. So after sales, then contribution to the nation metal. So depending on the number, uh, what round we're in, and we're in round one for ten dollars, I can buy a point. If I want to build a city, that's going to cost me, well, it could be free if I flip the oil, because those are going to flip back over at the end of the round. Do I want to spend the 10 bucks? It's not going to get any cheaper to buy a point. And I have to get to 50, right? All right, we'll buy a point. There we go. Then we're going to go into the reset phase. So adjust the game end target. So the city is at three. So one, two, three. That also, and those alternate three arrows, two arrows, three arrows, two arrows, three arrows, two arrows, etc. So we want to keep that on the three, if at all possible. So then reflip industries and cities. Cities flip over if they were supplied with hydro, but they were not. So that's all there. Then adjust the resource markers. So what these will come off and they would drop down, but obviously they're already kind of bottomed out. So they go no lower than their starting space there. Move the game phase marker and the phase cycle marker. So we come back over here. We're in round two. Adjust the action cards. These four will go away. There are There are a total of six more, so we're going to go top four there. And then these two won't come out. They'll actually be, these will be shuffled up. And I'll put this as a reminder to myself, like so. Then return the minister cards, which we've already done. That comes over there. And then adju adjust the support cards. So... That comes, those get discorded, and here we go, all right? Yes, the artwork and the font and the whole nine yards, I completely agree with you guys. Hi, Chris. What's up, man? Hope work's going well. Um, my first font, it's uh, it's almost Comic Sans. Uh, Comic Sans, uh, yeah, not my favorite. Um, Hmm. Interesting, Morton. So are you guys able to follow along? Is it is it making sense so far? We are now one round into the game. So going into, you know what? Actually, this is going to be distracting to me, so I'm going to move these off board. There we go. Okay, so we start back over. So decide turn order. I think the government's going to go first. In case I choose to hire him, and that's likely going to happen. So we're going to do the resource die roll now. So there and now. We're hoping for a high number, so those will boost up. Ay vey, come on. Not helping us here. All right. Support cards come out. So we have Belgium. Transport bonus. And that says, collect 10 bucks for every one of your transports on the map. 
Well, I have none right now, but that might motivate me to change that. And we have a Venezuelan transport bonus. Collect 20 bucks for each of your ships on the map. Well, there's that. And ground troops, Rwanda. And this says, add plus one to all combat dice rolls. You make this action phase. This card may be taken, it may be taken after any of the dice rolls. Hmm. All right. Well. Hmm. All right, so this is only for one of those four, just to be clear here. So I'm just kind of thinking, I probably ought to think out loud, I apologize. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is roll the die and see how much the minister is going to cost. Uh, th three bucks. I think we're going to go ahead and take the interior minister. There, so... We'll go ahead and put that right here as a reminder. All right. And now here we go. Kasai uh, Oriental here. And then Bendundu. That hurts because we cannot initiate combat on the government's turn there that's frustrating and equator oh he goes away that's good yeah, at least a little bit of good news all right um no collect zero oh, are you kidding me and adjust we don't adjust that one at least so there's that all right take care chad okay so the government takes their turn what are we gonna do well actually Use to pay for actions, but I don't think the interior minister can initiate combat at all in this case. Nope. Oh, actually, hold on. It says that it can't place or move peacekeepers, but it says you can take a normal turn. So if that's the case, the regular turn, the very first thing that a player may do Because they have a peacekeeper there, I think they can. I think they can because they have one there. Because the first thing you can do, you can't place uh, peacekeepers, but then, yeah, I think we can. All right. Yeah, so we're going to do that. So we're going to. Good. Took care of that. Easy enough. All right. So now we can go ahead and take our actions. And our actions, so let's see. Just want to make sure that I'm making my money out of this. Remaining money. Yeah, it's always remaining money. I, I misspoke earlier on placing the transport. It's always from the remaining money. So what do we want to do? So we can go ahead, probably build the infrastructure, I guess. And they can build it anywhere. However, well, no, they can't because all of these are unsuppressed. So basically could build it here or could build it there. And the double hydro I want for myself. Ugh. 
Although we could, let's see, unsuppressed, yep, can't even build via borders. Can build a truck. Ugh, that was poor planning on my part. Because of these guys being unsuppressed, you can't build transport uh, that borders where they're unsuppressed. That would only get me five bucks and it's not worth it for me to do that. And I want to be able to build my own city there. Oh, I planned very, very poorly on this one. And had that not got taken out, we could have done something over there with the Peacekeeper, at least. Uh, ah. So build a truck or build a crop, I guess, is really my only option here. That was really, really bad planning. Can't build a boat there because unsuppressed. Can't build a boat there because unsuppressed. Building a truck here. And the truck at least would get me five bucks. Ah. Chris says, I don't think the interior minister can initiate combat. Well, the thing is, is it says... Um, in each action phase and its turn, the government may make one action or pass if the interior minister is taken. The interior minister is responsible for each action, may, be, may use the money placed, da, da, da. The usual rules and costs apply when carrying out actions. And the first thing, yeah, right, thanks, Voris, no doubt. Uh, the very first thing you can do on your action is, or on your turn, is... Yeah, that's not clear. Uh, I am. All right, we'll say we can't. We'll leave him out there. Only defense minister can initiate combat. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, okay, so we'll do it that way. So we can build the truck here. Hydro will get me five bucks. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and just build a truck right there. That's going to cost 10 bucks from the government. And that gives me five bucks for doing so. That's it for the interior minister. That money will stay with him. So it's my turn. Now we're going to roll needing a two or higher. Good. Now he goes away. All right. So what are we going to do on our turn? Producing isn't a terrible idea, but I kind of want to build that first, I think. Well, that means if we build this, building that is going to cost us 10 bucks. Building a level one city there would cost us one of those. And it would be this one. And the level one city would cost us 20 bucks, which we can afford. Yeah, maybe that's not so bad. So there, build. So build build, produce, and then we can sell. Yep, I think that's what we do. So we're going to go ahead and build that. That's going to cost us 10 bucks, I believe, for the hydro. No, it's 20 bucks. Ouch. Yeah, I think we're still going to do it. 
Yep, 20 bucks. Oof, that hurts. All right, so that's done. Build a city. I guess the order of which I do that doesn't really matter. Yep, done. All right. Okay, so back to paying for the minister. So the second one is going to cost us two bucks to get one of those guys. Yeah, we yeah, we have to. So three bucks back. We're taking a defense minister because I gotta start getting these guys beat down there. All right, so we have this in Katanga. And then one in Basque Congo. And one in uh, Province Oriental, which already has one. All right. So can place one peacekeeper. And we have to get out from where we are. So what do we want to do? I think these are the two obvious locations to suppress. But the question is, which one? You know what? You guys tell me. Which one do you want to suppress? Equator or Kasai Occidental? You guys let me know. All right? And while you're doing that, I will determine turn order. I guess I was supposed to do that first, but... Yeah, we'll go government first. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Ship. Basically, it just cost me an action to place a ship out there, which would be 20 bucks. But I could take that, which would get me my 20 bucks back. But it cost an action. The lower one comes with a diamond. Oh, that's a good point. Good call. Yep, so we'll go ahead and put it there, but we're not going to do anything with that yet because we still need to roll a, high, a four or higher, but at least it's suppressed. Good call, Chris. Yeah, good call. All right, so we'll go with that. So we will initiate combat there with the defense minister. Um, so we need to roll a two or higher. Done. He goes away. All right. So, we are here. Oh, hold on. 20 bucks gets placed on the interior minister. And crops and minerals drop one. Golly. Okay. Yeah, do we stay on target? I think we stay on target. So, we're going to stay on target. A city normally will cost 20 bucks, but because we're sacrificing the oil, which is two. Yeah, we'll do that. There, we will place a level one city in Matadi. Right there. That gets us one point, which goes there. Maybe we try and upgrade another city to keep it under the triple jump there. Ah, oh, changes, changes. All right, we're done. So defense minister goes back. We roll, see how much the minister would cost. That would be three, uh, three times three, nine bucks. Oh, boy. Being able to place more here and that diamond location. And I do have the extra roll. Oh. oh, there we go, the diamonds. If it's a miner, it would get me five bucks, right? I have to have a peacekeeper there. 
That's something else I could have done on my turn, which actually I will. I'll spend 10 bucks, and I'm going to place one of my peacekeepers out here in Kasai Occidental. I should have done that first, but no combat was initiated, so there's that. So now it's going to cost us 9 bucks, which I do not have, so I cannot hire a minister. That makes that choice easy. Yeah. Okay, so Sud Kivu, Sud Kivu gets a major Kasai Oriental gets that and Katanga gets that. All right. Oh, well, the defense minister would have to remove one peacekeeper, but as it is, not, not happening. 20 bucks goes on to the defense minister, so that's now 55, so let's change that out. Did I get that wrong? Kasai Occidental. Nope, Kasai Oriental, right? No, I did that right. Or is it just a bad pronunciation? It's entirely possible, Vincent. All right. And nothing happens with the resources. All right. So what do we want to do? We have eight bucks. We need money. Bad. I don't see any other option other than producing. And if we produce, that means if I flip those, I can't upgrade that city. You know what? Let's not worry about the triple jump on this turn. We're going to go ahead and produce everywhere. So that's going to be three hydro total. One there, or two there, as it were. One, and then a double crop. Okay, there's my production. Done. Let's roll for the fourth minister. Let's hope he's cheap. He is not. That's 20 bucks. I guess we're not doing that either this round. Radio. Ouch. Okay, Province Oriental. Nord Kivu here and Sud Kivu. All right, get those guys off the board. That's, that's actually, that was really helpful for next round. All right, would have been able to position 15 bucks goes up. Wow, he is, we have got to do some stuff with him now. And then uh, crops and oil both drop one. That hurt on the crops, ouch. Oh, it, it's painful Randolph, let me tell you, it really is. All right, so what are we doing on our turn? Well, these are automatically going to sell, so I really don't need to worry about selling, right? So what can we do? We have eight bucks. I don't know what I can do. Well, hold on. I can initiate combat here first. If I do so and I roll a three or higher, I would get five bucks, which is going to be really important. If not, I lose them both, and it's worth the risk, I think. So there we go. Let's roll three or higher, guys. Or not. <sighs> Glory to Rome to the roll. Yeah. That hurt. Hmm. All right, so we have eight bucks. What can we do? Well, we can build crops, I guess. That's really all I can do, isn't it? And it gets us five bucks, or it costs us five bucks. It's a single, it's gotta go there. That's the only available spot. Spend the five bucks there. Whew. All right, resource sales, so here we go. So the crops, following the boat, the train, 
off. So that's going to be there. And because it's the purple line, that's going to be a total of eight bucks. So that'll be 10. Do it that way. Okay. Then there. All right. Then the hydro. So this will flip over because it produces to help with that city. That's going to be six bucks for that. And then there's two. So it produces another six bucks for that. So technically it would go there. And then another one is there. Then this one, the higher and lower price, which actually, you know what? Before we do that one, we'll do the higher and lower there. So that'll be a total of 18 plus six, that's 24. And then the lower here, which is four, that's 28. There we go. And it works just like so. So that's all the resources there. I feel like I'm playing terribly, by the way. Um, those will clear off. Those would drop all the way down, but they're going to reset since they're so low. I, I, without me pushing those up, I think it's a lost cause. And that all comes from that first roll or taking the finance minister. Um, so here we go. Yeah, here we go. Adjust the uh, end game target. So it's only going to move two spots this time. Then uh, reflip industries and cities. So there. Adjust the resource markers, that's already done. Move the game phase marker, so this will come back to elect ministers. There. This is going into round three. Adjust the action cards, so those will go away. We have seen eight of the possible ten cards. Oh. Yeah. Well, hold on. Thanks, Chris. Let's, yeah, I might as well use this since I can't there. Let's see if that would have changed it. That would have. So I would have been able to defeat uh, him here. Yep, we're going to roll this back a little bit. So that actually puts us back where we were there, which would have given us an extra five bucks. I had eight, so that would actually be at 13 bucks. And that actually got us 28. So what could we have done? in that case with 13. You know what? No. With 13, I can't afford to do that, could I? Nope. Uh, no, we're not going to roll it back. We're just going to re-roll for that because it wouldn't have mattered. The 13 bucks, I could have built some a transport, maybe, although the boat is 20 bucks, right? Yeah, so I couldn't have done it. So yeah, never mind. So we won't roll it back. We'll just put those guys back out there for the re-roll that I would have gotten. Okay. All right. Just, yeah, this, this way. Okay. Trying to get these faced the right way. Okay. Okay. All right, decide turn order. Uh, let's go government first. I think. Yeah, because uh, potentially I want the money. So there we go. All right, resource die roll. Can, can we roll something better? Can we roll a five or a six here for this? Four, all right, they go up two, I'll take it. That works. And the three support cards come out. Thanks for the reminder, by the way, Chris. This says, uh, place any two transports in one action, but I assume that means we still have to pay for it. Uh, that was Russia. Saudi Arabia says, place an extra 30 bucks with the interior minister. Wow. 
Hmm. You know what? Actually, hmm. Building infrastructure before they can build cities. Yep. Okay. And Angola is protection. When selling resources, all the resources in one set are permitted to use the transport unaffected by any insurgents en route. Nice. All right. So there's that. Uh, all right. So let's see how much the minister will cost. Five bucks. Wow. Awfully proud of themselves, aren't they? All right. So which one was that? That was a Russia. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't specify. So I'm going to assume you have to pay for it just like normal. Okay, five bucks. Let's see. To be able to build the infrastructure here, which would then allow me to build cities, which is going to be victory points for me. I think that's what we're wanting to do. All right, fine, five bucks. And I'll take the interior minister. Oh, I just had an idea. We'll see, see how this works out because, oh, it has to, well, mm, can you take the cards on the government's act? No, you can't, you have to do it for yours, so to be able to double up, to be able to take more money. But alas, I don't think I can do that. All right, so the government's going first. We've done all of that. Back out in Nord Kivu. There, Kasai Oriental. There, and Su Kivu. All right, there. Would be able to place two, can't. Another five bucks comes here. That's 75 bucks there. And hydro and minerals both drop. All right. So there is no forced combat. So now what do we want to do? Well, I think we build it industry. And you're allowed to uh, see it. Oh, well, hold on. In addition, you can build... Remember, in addition to uh, building industries on industry spaces, the interior may also build one extra industry, a single production in any province where all industry spaces have already been built on. One industry must be the same type. Uh... I think they can only build one. It's just saying that if it's locked out, they still can build one there, I think is what it is. But minerals cost them 30 bucks. I think we go ahead and do that. So that's gonna be 30 bucks to build a mineral there. And for doing so, I'll go and get a little kickback of 15 bucks as well for, for helping them out there. All right. No worries, Nick. I appreciate it. Tell Gary, uh, hopefully I'm not, uh, not uh, playing as horribly as I feel like. Hopefully I'm doing the game justice. I appreciate it, though. Um, okay, so they built industry and I got my money. So that helped me... Uh, it helped me out a bit. They are done. So now for my action, what do we want to do? I'm thinking we need to boost our cities. Or we can build more infrastructure here. Hmm. We're flush with cash. Uh, 
So it's 30 bucks. Let's see, when selling, that gives them an extra 30 for the interior or placing transports. Do I want to build any transports? I need to draw better, obviously, on these. Build infrastructure, the double hydro there, or and the hydro is going to cost me 20 bucks, or I could bump a city, which will cost me 40 minus whatever the resource discount would be. I have to boost my cities, right? Do I? I'm, eventually I do. It's worth too many points. Um, or I can build another... Oh, I don't have any level 1 cities. So you know what? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this city. It requires two industries. One must be in that location and one can be adjacent. Well, adjacent there doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. So it's got to be two here. So that's going to be a $5 discount. That's going to be a $15 discount and it cost me 40. So it's going to cost me 25 bucks there. This level one city becomes a level two, which now I get the higher price whenever I uh, give hydro to that city there. That bumps up one. Oh, and I should have been able to buy for 30 bucks. 20 bucks. I'm sorry, 20 bucks at the end of last turn. Did I want to do that for a point? I don't. It's too expensive. That bumps up to there as well. So that is it. I am done. That's the end of that action. We roll for the ministers. That's going to cost me six bucks if I want one of the ministers. And hydro costs 20. I really want him to be able to build some oil. Which all the oil is here or there. Oh, you know what? He, I forgot he can build oil there, can he? And that's going to cost me a total of six bucks. Unless I take the defense minister, which the defense minister would open up Equator. You know what? I think I'm okay. So I am going to pay the six bucks. I'm going to take the interior minister. I'm going to take this one, which puts an extra 30 bucks. You know what? On that. Yeah, I will. There. He's going to go first again. And now we're going to flip it. Province Oriental. It's already there. Nord Kivu and Sud Kivu. There. All right. Another 15 goes on to the interior minister. There. And then crops and oil both drop. All right, so what is he going to do? He's going to build some oil right there because, as I read earlier, you're allowed one extra and it must match those location or one of the resources. That costs 40 bucks. So there's 40, and I can take 20 for myself. That'll work. That'll do. Yeah, that works out really well. Good way to get some quick cash. All right, that is that round. Next round, we will decide turn order. I think I'm going to go. Cost. 
is 12 bucks. Nope, that's too much money. I'm not going to hire a defense or one of the ministers. Well, good thing I upgraded that city, and yay, I get free points. That's going to be good. So, Bendundu gets a major, and then Manima. Okay, and Nordkivu. There we go. Don't do that. 15 bucks goes back to the interior minister. Under the second cup of tea. That's still hot. Wow. Hydro and crops drop again. Dude, this game hates me. Okay, so I am going first. First off, that has to happen. So the level two city, and let me make sure the cities help with defense. I know, but I believe it's based on the level of the city. Let me double check. Uh, combat. Yep, point value of a city. Number of peacekeepers and the, and the die roll. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. He's a six, so we need a two or higher. Oh, and I should have gotten rid of these because I took that bottom card, or the, the minister's card. Okay, he goes away. Because he goes away, we get a point. It's not in a diamond area, but that's okay. That was worth it. So now we're up first, so what are we going to do? We could also upgrade this city as well, but that would use up the double hydro there. And that would, yeah, but we're, we have the money to do so. I feel like that might not be a terrible idea. Or we build infrastructure over here, which then allows us to get another city out on the board now that we have a level one city, okay? Ah, uh, man, that 50 points seems so insurmountable right now. What do you think? Infrastructure here or upgrade that city there? Because if we upgrade that city there, the only thing we have to produce is that double crop for a total of 12 bucks. I've got to. Whereas, ah, here's the other thing. If I build infrastructure here, I can't build a transport there, which means it, the, well, hydro teleports, doesn't it? Hydro is the one that will. Huh. It would waste one, but it would get us some money. And then on the last one, we can then go ahead and produce on everything to be able to get us a ton of cash for the last round or the next round to be able to then do all of that. I think that's what we do. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get some hydro going there for 20 bucks. It's a double. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we do. All right, next round. If it's cheap, we'll hire him to be able to build a ship there. Or do we have him produce? Because if he produces, remember, only get that, but I get half the money. Right? I'm pretty sure. Oh no, I get full per full if it's sold to the local market. Oh, regardless, I get full market whenever those resources are sold. Yeah. All right. I lost my place. Where was I? Sorry, I got so... I 
I totally lost my place, guys. Where was I? Chris, help me out. Government's going to go first next turn. I think choosing to pay for a minister, I think, is where I was for the fourth action. I think that's where I was. Let's go with that. 12 bucks to do so. Government can build the city. Mm. Did, did I roll? I did roll, right? Wow. Total brain cramp here. You know what? Let's just reset it. Let's hear. I'm not sure if I did or not. So there we go. So it's going to 16 bucks um, to hire. Or the finance minister to boost the prices. But I don't know what ones I can boost, right? Uh... Okay, cool. Then I did that right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, wow, that's a lot of money. 20, I would be able to take 10 to be able to, yeah. Golly. 16 bucks. But then we can't do anything because we're broke. But we're producing, right? So not a big deal. Yep, we're going to go ahead. Pay the 16 bucks. Are we? So I'm paying 16 to get 10, but it gets something on the board. Yeah, I think it's worth it. I'll take the interior minister. Okay. Manima gets a major. That was way, way harder than it should have been. Province uh, Oriental. I would. That's okay. That's not so bad there because they didn't take them. There and no adjustment. All right. So defense or the interior minister is going to place, I think, a ship. Yeah there and the ship costs 20 bucks right yep so that costs 20 and i will take 10 of it it was worth it all right done then on my turn i'm going to produce so we'll go to hydro here Then it's going to be two crops, two hydro there. And one oil there. All right. So then we go into selling of resources and I just want to double check because I believe I have one extra hydro. So just make sure.
does not use transport. Uh, one hydro is used to supply one city. If there's an unsupplied city in the same province, you have to supply that first. Then unsupplied city in an adjacent province may be supplied. Flip over the cities. A hydro that cannot be supplied uh, to a city mu uh, must be sold to the local market. Okay, easy enough. All right, so we sell. So what are we doing? So there's no city here. So actually, we're going to sell the hydro. It doesn't matter, actually. So there. Actually, it does. We're going to sell this hydro first. That'll be the lower price and then both price there. So that'll be 12, that'll be 16. And then this will go to the higher, 16 and six is 22, 23, 24. So there's that so far. And then the oil will sell at the higher price, which is 20. And then the two crops, will go via transport and be sold via the hire, which is another 12. There we go. All right. So this will then reset down to there. That will not. That will actually stay where it is, novel. There we go. All right, so adjust the game end target. And we're moving three, one, two, three. I could spend uh, 30 bucks for a point. That's just too much money, I can't do it. So advance there, reflip everything. All right, adjust the resource markers, done. Move the game end phase, we've done. This resets back over yonder. Adjust the action cards. There. Uh, return the minister, already done, and the support cards. All right, we are in round four. This is not going well. We're only at nine points so far. I, I suppose I ought to talk about in-game scoring. That might not be a bad idea. So, at the end of the game, there we go. Uh, each player is awarded medals for their counters on the map. For each industry, you get a point. For each transport, get a point. Two, four, and six points, respectively, for a level one, level two, level three cities. So, getting level three cities out there is good. Um, and then for every 30 bucks left over, I'm sorry, you get a point for 30 bucks, two for 70, three for 120, four for 180, and five for 250 bucks or more. Uh, yeah. And points for diamonds as well. Let me, uh, double check how much that is. And they have to be suppressed insurgents for the industry and cities um, to count. And one, uh, one point per diamond, which we've got to get to some diamond locations. We have this location here. We need to get out to Manima and Kasai Oriental to be able to get at least, hopefully, that bonus three points there. Just making sure I'm not forgetting anything else. And also, um, 
at no point does it say that you get money for the government stuff as well. So keep that, or points for a government. So there's that. <sighs> All right, turn order. What do we want to do? Um, I'll go first. All right, resource die roll. Can we get a good one? Yeah, up to. And support cards come out. All right, air support. After you've rolled, add plus two to the combat total in that province. Redeploy two government peacekeepers. Uh, so that's the USA, that's the United Nations, and we have the UK Stock Exchange. Raise or lower two resource markers on the international market by one box each. Those are all useful. Okay, so here we go. Minister is going to cost five bucks to do something. Uh, let's go ahead and take the defense minister and start getting some peacekeepers moved around now. Okay, Kasai Occidental. Right here. All right. That's actually good for us because diamonds. Uh, Manima gets a regular, so that goes away. And Katanga already has one. And we can place two. So we're definitely putting one here. And... There is that off board. Yeah, we're going to go and place one in Katanga as well. All right, that'll work. Okay, so we have to initiate combat here. So we have three. Remember, I do have this if, if wanted to. Okay, so we need, uh, we need what, a four or higher. Boom. All right, so that's a major insurgent removed. So the major insurgent says that it's a diamond province because it's a major, so I get a diamond and a point. Boom. There we go. You guys see that? Yeah, right there. Finally. All right. Hey, Bernardo. All right, you're moving all over the place. Nice. All right. That was important. That was good. Oh, and you go away. That was, uh, that was well done. And, and didn't have to go there. That's awesome. Yep. All right. Now what? So, uh, collect 10 bucks for the interior and nothing moves there. All right. So what are we going to do? We need to get some city stuff going. And it's got to be different resources. Ooh, I see the error of my ways now. Oh, no. Oh, no. So if I'm reading this right, neither of these can become the three-level city. So I'm going to have to come into Kasai Oriental to do so because it has to be three different types of resources. And because the government built that one, uh, so one, two, eh, no, and there it must be a J. Oh, wait. Ah, right here. There it is. That's adjacent. There's a line right there. So, okay. Do we look to do that now? Is that too early for a level three? That would be one, two, three resources. I think we go ahead and do it. Or do we go ahead here? 
and build a level one with the high. Ah, so we have hydro, we have crops. I feel like I should build the level one with using the crop and not the double hydro. So do we just build the crop then? And you're only allowed to build one, right? I. It's just one. You know what? Screw it. Let's get that three out there. To hell with it. So we're going to get a discount of five. A discount of 15. And a discount of 35. And it costs six thousand or 60. So that cost me 25 bucks. Boom. There we go. That was worth it, I think. I think. We'll find out. That felt pretty good. Defense Minister goes back. He did his job. All right, so let's go ahead and roll or turn order. Let's keep it the same. Something low, please, now. Nope, that's eight bucks for the Defense Minister. So now, honestly, I think I could move this one over to here if I took the defense minister for eight bucks. Wow, that's a lot of money. But let's do it. Take him back. Here we go. So there's that. So Bass Congo gets a major insurgent, but the city helps with that. That's good. We get a minor in ben, Bendundu and one in Kasai Occidental. Well, that was well distributed, actually. All right. Well, we're going to have a major there, but I get to place three. So now how do we want to do this? So, this guy actually, so that's one, two, three, four. I would need to roll a three or higher. I really can't take the risk. Can I? Am I doing anything over there? Hmm, hold on. I want the point. So I am going to move that there. So we can redistribute three. Well, he's dead automatically, no matter what. Uh... I'm going to place one there for sure. I do have that in my back pocket. I think I'm good. So this has to happen. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Need a two or higher. All right, point. That moves away. Oh, by the way, when I did that, I didn't take the point for building my city, did I? Or did I? Chris, did I just double move that? Let me know. Um, I took one point for that and then one for building the level three city. I'm not sure if I did that. Actually, I should be able to figure it out. I was at three. So let's see. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think I should be at 11, not 12. I think so. Let me know. Uh, and the city marker should be at seven. It is. There we go. Cool. Okay, so that's done. Now it's my turn. Do I wish to place or move any of my guys? I'm going to spend 10 bucks. I'm gonna move this one there. And then we're going to Go ahead and initiate combat here, which that's an automatic win. 
And for removing a four insurgent, do I get anything? I don't think so. Nope, since it's not a di diamond in uh, province here, um, we just get him out of there. And then I am going to initiate combat there, needing a three or higher. Is never in doubt. That goes away, and because it's a minor, I get another five bucks for that. Go back to 12. Okay, thank you, Chris. Good. And then, yep, dive in province. So there was just me there, so it's five bucks. There we go. Nice. Now we just need a major to show up here and to move some troops over. All right. I feel like we're getting a little traction here now, guys. So that was there. We get another 10 bucks to the interior minister. And unfortunately, oil and minerals both go down one. Okay. So we're going first. Defense minister did. That was money well spent, I feel like. All right. What are we going to do on our turn now? Oh, and, oh, I forget. We haven't rolled here yet. Hold on. So we need a two or higher there. Got him. So that's going to be another five bucks. It's a diamond province. Unfortunately, he's a miner. That goes away. Nice. Nice. All right. Cities are important. So that would be 40 bucks to upgrade this city. Or, because this is a diamond province, I think it's more important to get a city out because it adds plus one defense to this, which will help if there's a major that comes out. Even though the card is right there, I realize I think it's important to go ahead and build that city, so we're going to. So, we will flip. And it's a level one city, so it's only going to cost us... Or do we use the crops... Because the crops will cost us five bucks to build, and then that, and then we can produce with this to make more money. We will do that. So instead, we'll actually build some crops, which is going to cost us five bucks instead. And because that card's out, I think we are safe to wait one turn on that. Feel pretty good. All right. If you guys will give me just a moment, I will be right back. All right. Oh yeah, no one's asked, but Watsky shirt, uh, Watsky concert was uh, two nights ago. So first time I've ever bought merch at a concert right here. So, all right. Okay, that felt pretty good. I'm, I'm excited about the position we're in here. So let's go ahead and figure out how much it's going to cost for the ministers. Minister will cost us nine bucks. Eh, we might be able to do that. I think we can afford it. So what do we got there? We got five. Let's turn that in. Five, turn that in for a 10. Just to make it a little bit clearer how much we got. There we go. So it will cost us nine bucks to hire one of them. And a city would cost us 15. Yeah, it's 24. That'll work. 
there. So now the question is, and for the interior minister, they can always build one extra. Um, let me look. Uh, doesn't say who's built it. It's just one extra one. So that's always nice. All right. So who do we want to hire? So defense, let's see. I think we're going to hire the interior. Because we have that in our back pocket, I think we go with the interior to get us a few extra bucks to be able to do some stuff. There we go. So there's 25 there. All right. All right, let's see how it goes. All right, Equator there. And then we have one in Bas Congo. And one in Kasai Occidental. Extra cash. I will take it. I will like it. All right. So, uh, so we agreed that they don't initiate, and they're going second. So I go first. So I will initiate combat here first. Um, don't even have to roll because he's already dead there. So he just goes away. And here, do I want to move anybody for ten bucks? I. That does matter. I don't. I would like to, but I need to roll a two or higher here for Kasai Occidental. Done. That gets me an extra five bucks. Wish it were points, but alas. Okay. So. I think we're going to stay on target. We're going to spend 15 bucks. My, uh, 2000 or 20 minus the five for that. So that'll be 15 bucks there to be able to build a level one city in Ilebo. So that will go up one, that will go up one, and it's plus one if we get any baddies in there as well. Nice. Oh, add no money. And really, again, can we stop with this? There, all right. All right, so the interior minister, what are you gonna do? Building cities doesn't help me. It helps with defense, but it doesn't really help me. Um, selling, though, does get me cash a little bit. I think transport's probably more important. Although transport is worth points for me to build it. But building expensive stuff is beneficial for me as well. You only have 25 bucks. I anticipated getting more money. So anything up to 15. Can't build a city. What can you do? Can't build those. Hydro. Hydro costs 20, which will get me 5. Mm. Um, building. Can't build that train since there's an unsuppressed there. Could build the truck, which will get me 5. Yeah. Eh. So, there, and I take the five, and that goes there. It feels like that was a bit of a waste. Not real happy with the way that went down. It was poor, poor thought there. All right, going into the next round. Here we go. The can of die. Okay, that would cost me 20 bucks. That's not happening this round. There will be no government officials. All right, well, 
I'm going first, but I don't think it's going to matter. Big bad guy comes into Katanga. A small guy goes into Bascongo. And a small guy goes into Province Oriental, which there already is. All right. So, 20 bucks. Now goes on to the or, uh, Interior Minister. And really, can we stop with this? There and there. Oh, we still have this. So here we go. So I need to roll a five or higher. Well, that was terrible. That wouldn't help anyways. But, could, well, hold on. But, mm, I could do this, which would give me plus one. I think that's a too important to have not done. So if you guys will allow me a mulligan here to have done that. that okay? I guess the... So, I will have done that first, and then I can redeploy one more. So where do we want to put that? I think this guy comes out. I, unless the government can have more than two peacekeepers in there, I think they are limited to two as well. But let me double check. does say that each player may have a maximum of two peacekeepers in any province. And I don't see any caveats for the government in that regard. All right, cool. Okay. All right, so limited to two. So even with that, so... I will have redeployed those, so there, those will go away. So even with that, so that would have been one, two, three, four. So he still fails. So that means this, this goes away. That sucks. That would have been two points, but you know what? They're going, there's going to be combat here at the beginning of next round unless he goes away. So I'm going to spend 10 bucks to place a peacekeeper out here. I'm not going to initiate combat and then I'm going to produce. I have to. Because I'm going to need the money. So that's going to be two hydro to then be able to get more peacekeepers. Which, but, or to hire the defense minister, I mean. So two there. It'll be one crop here. And it'll be two hydro there. Anything else that I'm missing? Nope, that's it. Okay. So then we go into resource sales. So two hydro. So that'll be lower amount. That'll be both amounts. So lower amount. So that's 18. That's 24 for that. Then that'll be lower in both. So 24 and 12 is 36. That's 4,000 for that. Or 40. And then this one crop. Oh, hold on. Let me roll for that. I forgot to do this. I need to roll a two or higher. Done. There you go. Get out of there. Uh, and that was it. I'm not doing any other combat. So that's 4,000. And then this is the higher amount. So 48 bucks.
That's a little bit better. Yeah, I forgot about that, Chris. Took care of it. That would have sucked. If, it, if I failed, then it would have been $4 less. So there's that. All right, cool. Okay. So that is all the resource sales done. Then adjust the game end. We are entering the penultimate round. And three. One, two, three. So this will happen two more times. So possibly one, two, three, four, five, six. So right there. So I need one, two, three, four. My city marker has to move five in a perfect world. Five. Help me remember that. Five. Okay, we'll see how it works out. Reflip everything. I don't think I have a snowball's chance, but we will see. Is that everything face up? I think so. Uh, adjust the resource marker. So that will drop. That will drop down to there, but it resets back to there. And just keep these off to the side. That will stay. That will go there. Uh, move the game phase marker. That's done. Adjust the action cards. These will go away. What way? Okay, I want them facing that way to the left. All right. And the minister cards are already reset. All right. Okay, here we go. So turn order now. Because of this guy here, it doesn't matter because I'm almost assuredly going to take defense minister, so it doesn't matter. Okay? So resource, come on, big numbers. Big number. Oops. Eh, two. Okay, and now, now we want a low number. Come on. Really? Six bucks. Well, that's for the defense minister. That has to happen. Yuck. Thing is, he knew that I needed him in Katanga, so he, he, he demanded the max value, which thematically kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Glory to Rome to him regardless, because screw you, you greedy son of a... I mean, it's just business. I get it, but it doesn't mean... Hmm. All right, uh, here we go. In a perfect world, I think I want, I want three peacekeepers and I would like a major in Kasai Occidental. Nope. All right, Minima gets a major. A minor in Equator, so that goes away. And then a minor in Province... Oriental? Yep. All right. Remove two. Really? Glory to Rome to the card, too. That sucks. So dude not only took my money, then he just said, eh, I'm not going to help you. Screw you, dude. Defense minister, you and I are not on good terms, dude. Well, hold on. Cuba mercenaries, re-roll the combat die once. Hopefully we don't need that. We have German efficiency. You can carry out two actions this turn, but the types of actions must be different. Really? Both of those have to come out at the same time? That just means I have to roll well, I guess. And Israeli intelligence. Secretly examine the next three action cards face down or from the deck and replace them in any order. Yeah, that's not happening. Okay, well, I have to remove two. Golly, that's so dirty, dude. That's so dirty. Five bucks to the interior and no adjustments on that. So I have to roll a five or higher. To get him out of there for two points. Come on. All 
I really want to be able to do this. Oh, and I could have bought a medal for 40 bucks. That wasn't happening. Because if I fail, then I waste this card, right? All right, let's try and think about what we're trying to do here. Producing and selling might not be a bad idea early on, which I could do that in one action right here. Because if I if that roll stands, those guys have to come off the board, which is going to cost me more money to put back out there. But I'm about to get a ton of money if I produce right now. And you know what? I'm not going to re-roll. They died heroes. Done. I'm coming for you, you son of a... All right. I'm going to roll the proverbial dice now. I'm going to spend 20 bucks to then put one peacekeeper out here and move one peacekeeper there. Then for my turn I'm going to use this to then produce for sure. So that's going to go there. And producing is everything. You must, or may you hold some back. Let me look at about that. May produce on some or all of their industries that are face up. All right. Well, we're going to produce there. We're going to produce there. We'll produce there. So that and that can upgrade that city. Cannot upgrade that city. So if that's the case, I might as well produce this as well. So that was my product. That was my action. And I can say, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and take that card. Thank you, German Efficiency. And we're going to go ahead and just sell now. So what are we going to do? So first off, this will come out there for 26. This will go for lower value and higher value. Oh, I'm sorry, both and lower. So that's going to be uh, 24. That's 32. Then same with those. 32 and 18 is 44 and 6. 44 and 6 is 50. These will go for the higher value. 50 and 24 is 74. 74 and the higher value. Oh. Wait, you can only sell two batches. When you... S no, it's only a type, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. Son of a... Right? Yep. Pretty sure when you sell resources, it's only one type. My bad. Hold on.
one of their sets. Yep. Oh no, you sell all of them, but one set at a time. So we're good. We're, we're, we're doing right. So that's going to be, sorry, uh, that was 50, right? And then that was 74, I believe. 74 and 8 is 82 bucks. That'll turn into a 5, which will turn that into a 10, which that's now 105 bucks. That'll do. There we go. That was worth it. You son of a... Mm. But now we're a little bit more flush with cash. So moving into the second round, let's see what happens. There we go. Two bucks. Don't mind if we do. We will hire him. Now he's a little sheepish. He's embarrassed. And so now he understands the mistake that he made and he is repentant. He will never again do what he did. Charge me max and then have nobody show up. He says, don't worry. I won't do that again. Here we go. So, Equator, that goes back out there. He's coming down to Bass Congo and Kasai Occidental. Placing two out there, there and there. That's a little bit better. All right. So, this must happen first. We need a three or higher. Golly, do we need this. Come on now. Yes, yes, there we go. Add one for the good guys and a diamond. Boom, dead. Uh, he chooses not to engage here and that's the only other place that he can. So, well done, defense minister. You earned your pay this time. Nothing to the interior minister. That will drop there. And this will drop to there. All right. Nice. I will take that. So now on my turn, what are we going to do? Empty here. This is a city of one. I was wanting to bump that up. Yep. So we're at two. I need a three or higher here. We're going to try and fight it. Wait, I don't need the discount. I don't need to fight him. So it would cost me 40 bucks without the discounts of those. It cost me $15 to not fight on the gamble. Fifteen bucks is a lot of money, but if I don't roll a three or higher, that really hurts. But I could build infrastructure here. If that fails and then pay twenty bucks next turn to go after it. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We need a three or higher. Come on. Was never in doubt. I don't know what you were sweating, dude. And because of the Diamond Province, we get an extra five bucks. Come on now. All right. So we are going to... Mm, if we wait to upgrade that city until... We can't upgrade it twice... That will only be a double jump, which means that will only move to there at max. I think we go ahead and buy, build an industry here. And the minerals cost 30 bucks. So we'll get 70 back. Make it 75 back. And that'll get us double minerals. That'll work. 
All right, moving into the next one. Let's see how much it's going to cost us. It's going to cost us uh, one, two, three, nine bucks. Hmm. What do I want him to do for me? Interior wise, it's not just money, it's also being able to help, right? I'm going to build a city here. Oh, actually, I have to upgrade this first, then build a city, which is going to be both of those actions, right? So I need cash. Do I need to hire anybody for this? I'm protected at least somewhat everywhere. I would like to be able to get rid of him. I think I'm going to wait. I'm not going to hire anybody this round. That may have that may have been a mistake because of that. Mm. Matima. Not the time to be frugal, apparently, and one in Katanga. Oh would have been able to move two around. So that drops and hydro drops. There. Ah. All right. Well, this has to happen. I have two. He has six. I need a five or higher. Nope. That hurt. Unsuppressed. All right. My turn. Spending 20 bucks. One's going here. And one is going, moving there. Not going to initiate combat there yet. I am going to initiate combat here, needing a two or higher. Whew. All right, there we go. There, get an extra five bucks for that. All right, so we are going to build the city here. I can't because I don't have a level one city. That's why I needed that place first. Son of a... All right, I guess we're building a train because I'm going to need it to be able to transport out plus its points at the end of the game. So build some infrastructure for 20 bucks. Plus, I mean, CCMF, right? So nobody here and he's suppressed there so I can build that. Yep, we're good. All right. And not fighting there. Whew, that hurt. Did I add the 10 bucks to that? I think I got upset I didn't. So don't think I added that there. Done. Now let's roll and see how much the minister is going to cost me. It's going to cost me 20 bucks. I thought, I thought he and I talked that he wasn't going to do this again to me. You son of a... Can't believe I'm doing this for... 20 bucks, yep. You do what you got to do, though. Keep the defense minister. Major in Sud Kivu. Kasai Oriental already has one, and Katanga gets another. 
Okay. Well, and remove one. Son of a... Just saw it. Come on, dude. You're killing me, Smalls. Wow. 20 bucks and just got obliterated. Oh, that is so wrong. I guess I removed this one. Combat is getting initiated there. Get five bucks back. Wow, that took the wind out of my sails. Something fierce. So it's my turn. So what he's doing here is he's preventing me from getting the discount to upgrade that for 40 bucks. Or that cost me 40, which obviously I do not have. You can move back points for 10 bucks every point that you move back, but they're too valuable. I can't do that. And I, I have a 50-50 shot on rolling a four or high four or higher on that. And if I don't do that, what am I going to do? I mean, I could produce for a whopping... Yeah, it's not even worth it. Yeah, we're going to try it. Wow. Need a four or higher. Failed. <sighs> so what do we do? All right, I'll spend 20 bucks. Another choo-choo right there. But I got no money right now. Going into the last round. And nothing sells. So these come off. That will drop down one. Okay. So just game end target, that'll drop three there. I'm not, I don't have the money to buy the extra victory point, flip everything. Hmm. So what do we learn here? Don't get too confident. I feel like if I had one more round after the sixth, I'd be in good shape. Okay. Hmm. Glory to Rome to the defense minister, just for good measure. Just, I don't like the look of him anymore. Horrible human being. Uh, all right, let's check out uh, resources now. Never got a never got more than a two bump. Yep, defense minister is a traitor. That's yeah, all those fake. Yeah, trust me, they were gruesome to experience, Vincent. Let me tell you. Oh, it hurts my soul. All right. So, support cards. Maybe we get something exciting, though. All right, Egypt, we got some marketing here. It says, when selling resources, one set can be sold at the price in the box that is one above where you place those resources. That's cool. 
is that is that really 90 bucks for minerals up there at the top? Yes, yes it is. Okay. We have Uganda mutual support. Collect 20 bucks for every metal you reduce on the metal track. Yeah, that ain't happening. And the last card that we see, peace initiative. Collect two medals after defeating a major six insurgent or collect one medal after defeating a minor four insurgent. All right, that's what I'm talking about. And by the way, just so you guys know, those are all the cards we're not gonna get to, okay, in this game. Yeah, exactly, exactly what Chris said. Imagine that happening in a multiplayer game to one person, and that's what we ran into in our four player game. And it just, there's nothing that they could do in that case. So keep that in mind. Plus, they kept getting hammered. You'll notice that it basically is here, 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 um, for the most part. I guess there's a little bit up there, but anyway. All right. So we're paying whatever the minister says. So four bucks, we have to. Oh no, I just realized, if I don't take the defense minister, so if I produce, that'll get me some money, so at least producing isn't terrible. But I only have four actions left. Oh, that should have flipped. So okay, before I choose my minister, if I produce, I need like this and this for that one. So these, trying to look, okay. So I'm just going to put some white cubes, since I don't have a lot by way of minerals, of things that I can't, just as a visual aid for me. So things that can't produce, if I want to upgrade that to a two, Thirty-two. It's only twenty-six. So that and that. So then to build a level one city, that. So if I were to produce, hydro gets me paid. How much right now? Thirty-two for this one. 32.56, and I need 5,000 minus those discounts. I can do that. Okay, so if that's the case, I don't, I'm not desperate for the money from the interior minister, so you son of a bitch, we're going to try it again. If it had been removed, I would, I would have flipped the table. I'm not kidding. Okay, I am kidding a little bit, but. Kasai Oriental already has one, and Sug Kivu. All right. Well, to the surprise of exactly zero people. There. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm actually compelled. Like this is this is good stuff. I'm digging this actually, even if the things aren't going my way. Um well, I mean, obviously I'm taking this card, right? Yeah. Okay, so we need a three or higher. We're over 50%. Come on. Yes! So I get two medals for that. One, two. One for beating him. There. And then get a diamond. Be gone with you. And there's our max three diamonds that we can cash out. Yeah, exactly, right? All right. That worked out. Now, he's suppressed. I think we have to go after him. Because otherwise, it doesn't double produce. It only single produces, so I think I have to go after him. 
With a two against a four, I need a three or higher. Come on. Yes. You get nothing for it, but he's out. Hmm. Needed that. All right. So anything that doesn't have a white cube on it is going to produce. So. There. Those were the two biggest rolls of the game, without a doubt. There. I think that's it, right? Okay, so now we can take these off as our little reminders. All right. We have produced. Oh, and these should have dropped. Well, that hurt. Okay. You know what? Hold on one sec. 90 bucks. Well. It's now 52. Wow, that's a huge difference. Uh, at the end of the game, 52 there. See how many points money is worth at the end of the game and see whether or not. I would have to get to 70. No, it's not worth it. All right. All right. Yeah, the level one city is worth two points, so it makes more sense to do it this way. All right. So we are done producing. That's it. Done. Let's roll. Well, we need him. We need to roll a one or a two for this to happen. Oh, and I get one more point for defeating the level four insurgent there. Hmm. Yes. So... That here is a f four bucks. That'll be those four bucks. Now, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Who? We're about to get some amount of money. Do we keep the defense minister? So I can move stuff around as a insurance policy. Or do we say to hell with insurance and try and get some extra cash because now we're looking at, how much are we looking at? So here, um, that's 18.24 for that. This will be 24.36, that's 4,000. 4,030 to 7,200 and we have enough to do it. So I don't think we need the cash. So I think we stay with this piece of crap um, and roll the dice on that. Here we go. Whew. Here we go. Ben Dundu there. Uh, Matima has a there and Nord there. We get to place one. That'll go there. We need a two or higher now for that. Whew. All right, we'll take the point. Thank you. Combat is super important on this. Uh, 15 bucks then goes there. Can we stop with the hydro dropping? You And the, cr really? What I'm about to sell? Seriously? Gross. All right, let's sell it. Well, hold on. Is there anything, any other combat? No. So that's now going to be 12 and 4. That's 16. Higher and lower and just lower. So 16... And nine is 25, 25 and three is 28. And then these guys, 28 and 24. 28 and 24 is 52. Done. All right, let's see how much these uh, this defense minister will cost me now. 12 bucks. Uh, 
I mean, I am racking up points just killing these guys off, but... The government's going to go first. I think it would be 12 bucks to get the interior minister, huh? That would get me uh, get me 3 bucks potentially if I were to like build another one of these. I don't think that's worth it. Thirty. I'm doing some quick math. Thirty. Fifteen. So level twos are forty thousand. So that's eighty. I need a hundred dollars to be able to do all three minus the discounts. So a hundred minus fifteen. Minus 20, minus 30, 40, 50. I need 50 bucks. I have 50 bucks. So that means I cannot afford to hire the defense minister. So we're not going to. You know what? I'm convinced once I said he wasn't going to get hired, he was, he actually, I think is the leader of the insurgents. Cause he was like, okay, go ahead, go ahead and mess with all of his plans here in Katanga. That's awesome. And we get another one here in Bas Congo and province oriental up north. Wow. So how much do we have there? 50, 6, 7, 80, 90, that's a hundred. I'm stalling a little. Yep, it's a hundred dead on. <sighs> crops drop. And that drops. There we go. All right, well, this has to happen. We need a four or higher for two points. Nope. And more importantly, that means can't build the city there. All right. We're going to upgrade a city here. So that's going to be five, 15 discounts. So that's going to cost us 25 bucks to get rid of that there. And that stays flipped. So 25 bucks for that. Done. Oh, I guess I wouldn't have been able to anyways. I only had two actions left. Well, this is the important one now. And that's going to cost me 20 bucks, which I have seven left over to be able to put another troop down here. So I need to be able to make, yeah. So government's definitely going first next turn. Let's see. Oh, but I it cost me, yeah, let's see. Is that a six? It is. So it cost me 24 bucks. I can't, there's no way I can recoup that money. Which means I'm going to have to roll a three or higher. Or be able to figure out a way to make some money and I don't see that, so... I can't afford the 24, so I'm not hiring anybody. Province Oriental. There. Nord and Su Kivu. There. He gets another 15. There. And that drops and that drops. 
Must have combat here. Need to have a six. Doesn't matter, he dies. So here. A level two city costs 40 bucks. Minus 20. So I have to be able to beat him. So I need to roll a three or higher because that's a level one city. Come on. Nope. Can't do it now. Oh, when I did that, that should have moved and that should have moved. Forgot to do that. Uh, so what can I do at this point? This is unsuppressed. Here, but that would be worth a buck. That's unsuppressed, so I can't do that. I could build a truck. Can I? A truck or a boat, where is that even possible? Unsuppressed can't there, unsuppressed can't there. Unsuppressed can't there and everything up there. Okay, so we can't build any transport or infrastructure in any of those locations. I can't build any infrastructure there other than a truck. I could build a truck here. So worst comes the worst, that's worth a point, right? I think that's all I can do. Oh, that hurt. And that's 10 bucks. All right, sell resources. There's nothing left to sell, so here we go. Okay, the game lasts for a maximum of six phase cycles or rounds. For the baronial victory, the player must score a minimum of 50 medals. For a national victory, you have to also ensure that the city development reaches the game end target. Well, you can see that didn't happen. Uh, oh, we go through end of round stuff. I apologize, hold on. Uh, adjust the game end target, it will actually move two, so that's where it finished. Reflip, adjusts, nothing else matters. That happened. All right, so the final scoring now will be one in, uh, a point for every industry and transport. Oh, shoot. Let me, let me redo something real quick. Because had I remembered this, probably wouldn't have taken that risk. So hold on. Um... Yeah, I wouldn't have taken that risk. Uh, I'm going to put this back here and not have upgraded that because otherwise I'm guaranteed to lose four points and I can't, I can't take that risk because if it's, if it's uh, unsuppressed, then you get no points for the industry or the cities. So let's flip these back. Suppressed is okay, but unsuppressed is not. And I can't, I, I would, couldn't have taken that risk. So... All right, so what do we get? One for every industry, and this one won't count because he's unsuppressed. Um, which means I will get, it says industry and city, so I will, and then I will still get a point for every transport. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, eight, nine, ten, ten more. 10 more gets me to 30. 
Then for the cities, I'm getting two for every level one. So two, four for this one, so that's six, and six for that for a total of 12, which puts me at 42 points. Then for money left over, you need 30 bucks for a point. I don't have any. And uh, a point for every diamond, I have three to a maximum of three. One, two, and three. So just the what if now. So there we go. So I lost at 45 points. I needed to get to at least 50. So it was close. Had that and that happened, that would have been worth two four points that would have put me one short nope and building building this city alone would have given me an extra three points one for the city bump that would have moved up one that would have moved back one so still wouldn't have met that and then one for that and then two for it being a level two city would have put me there and then had I been able to build that one city, that would have been an extra two, uh, three points right there. So there you go. Don't neglect your cities, people. So that's the, uh, that's the moral of the story there. There we go. Whew. All right. So, DR Congo. Um, I really enjoyed this as a solo game. I really did. There's, there's I mean, the narrative of the, uh, the defense minister being a traitor and being, uh, being in cahoots. With the insurgents, I thought was actually a pretty cool little story with that. Uh, obviously, with it being a solo game and only having 24 actions, a majority of the board got neglected. Um, that's not the case in a multiplayer game. However, that randomness that you saw in this um, is amplified when it's multiplayer and it's only one or two players getting picked on by the game. So as a solo game, I don't mind that because I can write that story. It's only affecting me. It's not unfairly affecting me when it's not affecting the other players or vice versa. But uh, yeah, thematic, I think it makes a lot of sense. I like the, I like the ties that it feels like, okay, I'm trying to build up the infrastructure within my country. And um, unfortunately, I had a defense minister that was petulant and greedy and a traitor and horrible. Uh, I, yeah, I really, really, I thoroughly enjoyed this as a solo game. And even though I failed, I feel like I came relatively close from not only winning, but possibly having a major victory and, and basically winning it across the board. I think that would have been really cool. And I, I see the, the path. Um, I rolled terrible for my resource production right, or the, the prices on the resources, which limited how much I could do because how much money I had. And even though I never used the finance minister, maybe that would have been a better use of using the finance minister to bump up uh, the values over on the international market. Uh, but yeah, the randomness doesn't affect me at all in, our, in a solo game like this. And what was that? Three hours, 15 minutes while talking everything out, while explaining everything in the whole nine yards. I think two, two and a half hours is totally doable once you're experienced with this game and not streaming it. But yeah, highly recommended as a solo game. Um, I cannot recommend this game at all as a multiplayer game though, based on our experience previously. But as a solo, absolutely. I think this was cool. And the artwork and everything, the artwork in the uh, the iconography and the font and all that stuff, you know, as you guys could see out here, um, it completely goes away. And I'm not, that's just Ragnar Brothers. They're quirky, as I, as I mentioned earlier. So I, all of it was very clear to me here in person. Hopefully it was to y'all as well. So I can't, I, I don't know how it streamed and how well it showed, but everything's really clear here. But yeah, overall, really enjoyable solo game. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, whether you're live or after the fact, give it a thumb. You know, thumb wars, appreciate it. Um, a thumb drive, that's what they call it. That's right. Uh, that, would, that would really benefit the, the show. Don't forget to subscribe. You want to go the extra mile? 
uh, and support the show financially. Really uh, pretty amazing Slack group and you get some cool merch here and there as well as well as other benefits. You get shout outs on the show, this and that. So really would appreciate you all checking out PledgeHC.com as well. So there you go. This is uh, day two of the, uh, the 32 days of constant content or behind the scenes work. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this and we're just getting started. So looking forward to the rest of this month. I will be back Monday. We got a double header Monday. So check it out. Watch the weekly look ahead Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern to find out what all's coming the following week. So until then, I'm Edward. Thanks everybody for joining. It was a lot of fun. Take care.